Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna answer a subscriber's question here. It was actually a comment through an email, through a discussion I was having, and I was kind of surprised by it, but then I'm like, no, nah, I've heard this before. Like, I, I know what they're getting at here. Um, so let me just read you the question real quick. Um, the physics department, which they are a part of here, they're working on their master's and PhD, so they already have their master's working on their PhD. They had a speaker come from a venture capital firm. Anyways, he said that, you know, hedge funds, which basically where a lot of quants end up going, uh, they don't want you to have any finance training because they want someone with strong mathematics, coding, and statistics, but not already trained with models that are not the secretive ones they want you to learn with a fresh mind. Is this true given that, quite frankly, I don't know anything about finance yet. It's a field I want to explore though. I don't want to learn things that might even consider detrimental in my resume or interview. Which topics should I not learn? Any thoughts on this? Oh man. So yes, I've heard this advice before. Um, there's gonna be two angles kind of coming at you from this here. You're gonna have the finance business side and you're gonna have the math and the stat side. Both bad kind of perspectives here and I'll give you a good one here in a second. Um, the first one, let's go with the finance and the business side. Um, often this comes from people like those in venture capital who are often not quants, not even close to being quants, don't study high-end deep mathematics. Now, of course, there are sure there are tons of venture capital funds that have actual quants, but many of the ones I've ran into do not have those building actually rigorous, deep mathematical models here. So kind of entertaining, um, but they have this business finance mentality to them that they are here to run the business, to make the decisions. They are very smart people. And what they're going to do is that they are going uh, to just make these big decisions and they're gonna hire these mathy people that are so smart, because obviously the really smart ones don't know anything about finance, because finance people, you know, they just, we're just different here. Um, we're gonna hire one of those math people that have no personal skills. That's kind of the mentality you get, and so they think in their mind they know everything, they're going to train you, um, to you know, be just a quant and they're gonna hire other quants to train you. It's kind of a negative mentality. This is wrong. This is bad mentality. This is bad behavior. Uh, no, this is not actual quants. This is not good business practices. If you run into this, run like hell. These firms are chocked full of idiots. Um, just gonna put that out there to start with. Now, the second type of person is going to be those that are quants. It's the quant perspective here. And the mentality is those with business degrees or finance degrees are just stupid, right? You have no idea how the real world works. Um, you're just learning out of one of these, you know, textbooks like Ross on corporate finance. You know absolutely nothing about the real world. And so therefore you're a finance person. You're not real bright. Um, we don't want to hire people like that. So the, the advice here is trying to get at, you know, like, oh, don't learn finance because you don't want to look like a finance person. And I get this to an extent because when I tell people I have a finance undergrad, the first thing they think is, ooh, I have a finance undergrad too. Uh, like I could be a quant. Like everyone can be a quant. It's just so easy. I ran out. I got this book, you know, by Stephen Shreves or, you know, Hole's book, um, Big Hole, Options, Derivatives, Pricing, and all that. I read this book and now I'm a quant. Um, and I try to distance myself from that because realistically, as many of you know from watching this channel, um, you can't see the other bookcase that's over. I have stacks and stacks and stacks of math and stats books and I just read them, I enjoy them. Um, I'm just learning to learn, right? That's the whole process of being a quant is often just enjoying the process, enjoying learning. I mean, I'm reading a book right now on measure theory or on uh, graph theory and I don't see any practical application to quant finance and I'm not even looking for it. Like there probably is, I don't wanna know. I just wanna read a book on graph theory for math people just to do pure mathematics here. Um, but anyways, there is that stigma. Like if you are a financy person and you kind of have taken some math, you're not really a math person. You're not really a stats person. Therefore, you are not a real quant um, in the perspective of some of these online forums, um, hedge funds, venture capitalists, typically lots of buy side hand wavy people. Um, yeah, so that's also another bad perspective here. My advice, learn, read, get interested, get involved in this. Don't go looking for gimmicky finance though. So if you're on YouTube, YouTube is a horrible place for finance. I know, I know, I am on YouTube here as well. But when you start to find people like, oh, let me teach you how to read technical analysis charts. This is probably what they're starting to get at. These aren't 
real things. Um, I think it is actually a huge advantage to learn traditional financial theory like the CAPM, um, even Markowitz optimization here. So the efficient frontier, for example, um, I have seen people post about it and say, oh, this is nonsense. The academic stuff doesn't work and yada, yada. These people are the sort of people, though, that work in the industry that have never actually generated actual value um, in a theoretical stance, an academic pursuit of knowledge. Um, it is, I picked numbers out of a hat and I thought I was really smart and I made money, so therefore I am smart. Um, it doesn't make any actual sense. The fund's gonna blow up in a year or two, but I am a real quant kind of mentality here. Um, again, guys, just go get textbooks um, or just learn like general ideas here. Don't learn how to trade. Um, don't go looking for things on investing. Like I tend to avoid those. Go look up things like time value of money. It's kind of an easy thing. Learn how a loan works and how amortization tables work. Um, learn how a uh, the at what a, it's the called the balance sheet with the assets and the liabilities and the shareholder equity. Go learn um, the income statement. Those are the two documents: balance sheet, and income statement. Um, that is how a firm is structured and designed. This impacts again multiple things. So if you're working on the sell side, uh, where I work, for example, we do loans and credit cards and you know all kinds sorts of products and things, and even like banks engineer, financial engineering products like derivatives. Um, a lot of these are going to be derived off of how is a firm structured financially looking at debt. If you're going to be doing on the buy side as well, even with like things like investing in equity, you're going to be looking at things like how much debt do they have versus assets? Like what is the weighting of these things? Looking at income, looking at things like PE, there's all kinds of ratios and things you can look at too. Um, again, learn, 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 learn. If you are a real quant, I'm gonna put this here, a real quant, you're just excited to learn and do that. Just go and learn. Now, again, yes, there are lots of gimmicky things on the internet. I think that's what they're kind of getting at in a good intention, but often the kind of negativity in feud between the business and finance people and the quant people and those who have skated somewhere in the middle, um, right? Quant's not black and white. It's this gray area fading from like super quant into traditional finance. Uh, it's easy to say traditional finance is not quant because you don't have enough math and stats. Uh, it's easy to say what is a quant on the far right side, but the middle is a gray area here. Don't be afraid to be in the gray area. Everybody, almost everybody's going to be in the gray area of some sorts. You know, you can you want to do quant finance and follow this channel, really push towards that side of math and stats. But at the end of the day, realize like you're going to need to know the finance side, the financial theory side. So I would recommend you guys learn as much finance as possible. Often when I go to interview candidates, um, I see a whole stack of, you know, like financial engineering masters or experienced people. And I'm looking, do they have the exact experience, that one project that's related to what I am doing? Um, again, if you have that project, you have that experience, you have that education or something around that financial piece that's the actual business we're modeling, that just makes it much easier to hire you because you already have a jump start on the problem themselves here. Um, touching on the proprietary modeling part, and they'll teach you their secret models. Oh, oh, the quant finance industry. Yes, I have worked on proprietary models for firms that are new and cutting edge and different than what I've seen everybody else do. Um, you only derive those sorts of unique proprietary things from the ground up, from having really strong math and stats and financial theory skills. It's not like somebody teaches you like the magic book of models or something and you figure it out and now you're making all this money. Um, if you're hearing that, those are just snake oil salesmen. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.